but anyway, this is um, the 27th, 27th of December, and I'm here doing my hand exercises. So my sister got me these for Christmas. These are, um, oh, sorry, from Decathlon. So this one's like medium and this one's hard. And actually, if anyone ever played violin, I used to have one of these um, when I was younger to strengthen my hands. But they, yeah, so that's what they are. They're to strengthen your hands. Um, I've looked into the science of the hand and there's lots of like, I'm, I'm not scientifically based, but this makes sense to me. And for climbing, one of my big aims in 2022 is to become like top 10 climber in Ireland for women. So I'm starting by strengthening the hands. So yeah, this will just be a small like vlog style video of what I'm getting up to my holidays and yeah. <laughs> So it's, I think it's like 18 degrees, basically. In February, I have to run the, um, uh, Seville Marathon. And actually, I checked the map, Seville is not far from the Algarve. So, uh, from Faro rather. So this is pretty good training. Um, I'm trying to build it up. So today I'll run for an hour really easily. And then um, I'll build it up like over the over the weeks, and yeah, should be good then for the marathon, which I will probably put on Law Hero. Nobody else out running, but that's typical for Portugal. People aren't very sporty here. And uh, I went to a shopping centre last night, and I was saying that like. I was asking them like why people don't work out here and they said like people go to gyms but like it's just not a thing here like the way it is in Spain so I don't know I'm not sure it seems to be like a cultural thing because when you run around here people are like shocked um, and nobody yeah nobody visibly does sport here so I feel kind of weird but anyway I have to run all the way up that hill. I don't know if you can see, but it's like that massive hill. And yeah, in this heat and this sweaty. So yeah, I'll report back once I've done the actual running. I want to make more of an effort on YouTube. Uh, sorry, the sun's blinding me here. Um, I do find it very hard to. No, I don't find it hard to chill out, but I do find it hard to not spend some time of the day on Law Hero, and the reason is because I've spent like I have so many ideas how I want to make it better, and you simply have to put in the time. So. This year, for example, um, my two big aims is to write 
an ebook called the Junior Lawyers Handbook because there's one in the UK um, for junior lawyers, but we don't have one in Ireland. Um, and then I want to write one for in-house counsel. They're my two big aims for this year. And also I really enjoy um, the YouTube essays I do. So yeah, um, but sometimes when I just sit back, I can feel a bit overwhelmed and that takes the good out of it. So I feel a constant struggle in trying to get things done, but not get overwhelmed. And I know that everybody goes through that. Uh, and then I envy people who don't have to do the work, but then I'm like, I brought this on myself. So it's like a constant internal battle. And I think if you're an entrepreneur and if you're an entrepreneurial tendency, you, you just do it. There's no other way to look at it. So like, for example, all my family are gone uh, playing golf now, but I didn't go because I wanted to work on my plan for the new year and see what I can do to make my business better and yeah it's just an internal battle which I'm sure anyone who's trying to achieve something goes through and usually what happens is people see the end result but they don't see like the many hours you spend on your own um, brainstorming like I write all my thoughts out they don't see the many hours you spend brainstorming, agonizing over the website, <laughs> agonizing over how to structure an ebook, like what's relevant, what's not, what will assist people in their legal career. Like, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of time, but nobody sees it. And that's why when I see, for example, successful business people, I no longer believe in the magic because I know there's no magic. There really isn't. It's pure input equals output. What you put in, you get out. And I've learned that from this business. The more I put into it, the more I get out of it. And I'm not talking financially. I'm talking in terms of impact. The more people are assisted and those shortcuts are made. That's what this whole thing is about. It's about short circuiting the bullshit of coming into this profession and just laying it all out in a menu that people can pick and choose from and whatever problem you have can be solved because somebody put it on her website and if she didn't solve the problem then somebody will come and say I have this problem I'm like oh wow thank you for coming to me with that because I didn't know that that was a problem and that's where the real motivation comes from. Is there a problem to be solved? And let's see how we can solve it. I think that's my motivation, solving problems for other people. That were my problems once, but now are no longer my problems. Now I have different problems. And I go looking for answers to those problems and nobody can give them to me. So I end up just sharing what I learned on Law Hero. So, yeah, I get quite philosophical about it, but it is philosophical at the end of the day. I read last night um, in the book I was reading that the law of reciprocity doesn't apply to animals. So, for example, I, I feel obligated to give back because people helped me out, but an animal doesn't feel like that. If you help an animal out, he or she won't feel obligated to repay. And I think that's really interesting. Um, and that is why human beings make so much more advancement than animals do because of the law of reciprocity. We, we enhance other people's lives because we feel obliged to do so because of a natural law of reciprocity, whereas animals don't feel obliged to assist other animals. And that's why, okay, apart from not being able to stand on their hind legs for prolonged periods of time or run very fast or also work in groups to solve problems, that's why they don't advance as much as we do also we've domesticated many of them so we've dumbed them down it, there's lots more reasons why animals aren't on our level i'm just saying i find it interesting that the law of reciprocity is um a human-based tendency anyway.
going to the driving range now. It's quite nice. I just cut through this golf course here, which you're not supposed to do. Looks like there's somebody playing there. I see a ball near the green. Um, yeah, it's quite nice here. My mother bought me this t-shirt. I don't really like it, but you have to wear certain clothes on the golf course, which I don't agree with, but that's life. That's my mother. Go, ma'am. My brother. So, yeah, I thought they were, I won't say real people, but real opponents. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. She's helped me be careful. They're better golfers than me, but I don't play a lot, so I don't care. It's basically, my whole thesis with golf is, eventually we'll all have to retire and play golf. And like, I don't particularly like it, but I do recognize it's a social sport. And the odd time, given the legal industry, you kind of have to play it. It's a bit like tennis. Um, like these are all very social sports that I'm not particularly good at um, I'm much better at sports on my own but I do recognise the social utility and currency of golf and tennis also the other thing as well I want to stress is that you don't need a lot of money for either sport um, we pay 20 euro to play here for the whole week and the driving range is two euro um, and tennis is free and um, so yeah I think people who say it's expensive they don't understand the way the economy has gone now the expensive sports are truly like biking skiing all that kind of stuff